Oh, there we go. First shot's fired. And go to the top. Ooh, did he get a hit? Let's find out. I oh, think yeah. they got... Yeah, good hit. Good hit on the vehicle. The gun is dead. The drive is dead. Commander looks like he hasn't even realised his crew's gone. And the car is gone. Down. Yeah, that is a vehicle taken out quite instantly. Armour 3, the latest platform game to enter the military esports world. That man um, is ready to ruin someone's day. Providing the opportunity for a competition between the Royal Armoured Corps and the Estonian Defence League. The question is, do real life military strategies work in the game? Oh, good shot. They were using correct formations uh, when they were moving, they were taking the time with things. Uh, we were being a bit quicker with, with what we were doing, kind of getting the action pretty quickly so but when it comes to actually uh, playing game in armor you are very much in that first person perspective the, the entire time uh, you do have to deal with the same issues of, of coordination with with people because you can't sort of just click on the ground and a marker pop up and say right i want you to go over there you very much have to use what's around you to indicate where things are where things are happening all the very basic lessons that we learn uh, in basic training like how things are seen are all clickable because if somebody's shooting at you and there's no tracer you need to identify where they are and the only way to do that is to fall back on the skills that you've been taught using um, various methods to identify where the enemy is the players are all going to be using night vision here and it is horrendous the game is built around military strategies with both sides looking to attack and defend yeah oh, oh. perfect for a military rivalry to start armor free's kind of always got its roots um, set in that kind of military simulator environment. You, we have kind of this wide range of games that kind of sit on an arcade and simulator spectrum. You know, on your arcade side, you've got your Call of Duty style games, and then on your far side, on the simulator side, you've actually got more of those armor ones. So in that choice, armor is, is the clear sense. It's also got a really powerful kind of sandbox tool where the creators of the game can, you can do whatever you want within it. You can set up scenarios, you can build environments, and it's just, it perfectly lends itself up towards what they were aiming for. He's doing an excellent job. The challenge for the Armstrong Cup originally came from the British. The British who visited the Estonian Defence League headquarters that threw up the challenge. Uh, pretty much it, I got asked the same way, since uh, EDL doesn't actually have that many armor players, but uh, I've been running an armor 3 community for the past uh, six and a half years. Ooh, there he goes. Yeah. On the day, it was the Estonian team who came out on top. But esports has proven to be a real tool for the military during this pandemic. It's more important than people give it credit for, I think. Um, maybe people who aren't familiar with it will, will see esports as, you know, grown ups playing video games, which are designed for kids sort of things. It's maybe quite an old fashioned way of seeing it. But the reality for me, and I've, I've sort of been involved in gaming for since a very young age, is that especially now when we are, we are st stuck at home, we are having to keep to ourselves and, and not go out to the pub and communicate with other people face to face. It gives people an opportunity to sort of escape the reality of, like you say, same walls, um, being in the same house day after day after day. While the Estonians may be celebrating now, the British will come back fighting. Oh, there good. it is, God <laughs> dang, that's, that's it. Kyle Dixon, Forces News. Good job, guys. I can't yeah, good right job. <laughs>